if you're looking for the video on how to smooth talk, you're at the wrong place, I'm sorry. Uh, but I do have a great movie to talk about. Hello everyone, my name is David Fish and welcome to fish to go where I do movie and TV show reviews, make lists and do essays and all of that fun stuff for you to take on the go. And I just want to give a quick shout out to all my new subscribers. Thank you so much. It really means a lot to me. And to all of you returning subscribers, thank you for returning. And I have another movie review for you. And today I thought I would cover a recent pickup I made during the Criterion Collection flash sale. So I picked it up on Blu-ray. It's a movie I had never seen before actually, but I have a really weak spot for anything with Laura Dern in it. And this is her breakout feature, the 1985 film called Smooth Talk. I had a chance to watch it recently and I thought I would give you my thoughts on it. Of course, if you want to know my immediate hot takes on any movie or TV show that I watch, literally afterwards, I will go to my Letterboxd account and I will write my little blurb. So be sure to follow me on Letterboxd. And as always, if you want to see more of this kind of content, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ding that bell so you can help support the channel and be notified as soon as new content drops. Lastly, if you haven't seen this film before, I will be talking about certain aspects of it that might be considered spoilerish. So I would advise probably seeing this video after you've seen the film, but you are more than welcome to stick around. With that said, guys, let's talk about Smooth Talk. It's a 1985 film directed by Joyce Chopra, and it's loosely based on the short story called Where Are You Going? Going, Where Have You Been by Joyce Carol Oates. The short story is actually a supplement in the Criterion Collection booklet. Uh, it says for Bob Dylan, so I'm assuming that this was written for Bob Dylan in the day. Published in 1966, so for sure. I'm kind of surprised I didn't hear about this film before the Criterion Collection release, but I gotta admit, 1985 in cinema, that was a freaking stacked year, Jesus. But this film did win the top prize at the Sundance Film Festival, so it must have had some special impact on indie cinema of the era. So just a quick synopsis, Laura Dern plays a teenager named Connie who enjoys doing pretty much what any ordinary teenage girl should. Uh, hanging out at the mall with her friends, going to the beach, uh, flirting with boys. But that wild and carefree attitude is something that her mother, played by Mary Kay Place, wants to keep in check and that surely causes friction in the family dynamic. Then a stranger, played by Treat Williams, appears in Connie's life who tries to lure her towards the fringes of her sexual agency. But she has to question for herself whether or not this is truly the moment to push herself towards it. The film leaves rather ambiguously for the viewer to ponder what becomes of youth and innocence and... Yeah, that's kind of it actually as far as plot goes. It's pretty bare bones with not a whole lot of actual build up or story momentum that when the film was over, I was kind of surprised but also perplexed that 91 minutes just flew by. Joyce Chopra crafts the film basically in half where the first half is primarily consumed of scenes where Connie is enjoying the niceties of her life with her friends and arguing with her mother and family about said lifestyle. And the other half consists of the stranger whose name is Arnold Friend or a friend, which is admittedly pretty dang clever. And the second half all takes place in pretty much one location and is motivated almost strictly by dialogue. And it's interesting because even though these two halves are aesthetically, tonally, or motivated differently, they are very much parts of the same product. It becomes clear and more evident by film's end that it is less interested in plot dynamics and keen on having the viewer be more invested in Connie's emotional states. And I say states, plural, because that awkward gap, that sort of 15 to 17 age gap where you're not quite an adult, but you're also not a child anymore, there's a full range of expression and emotions that are both inward and outward. What I think Smooth Talk excels at quite well is capturing that overwhelming sensation, that unspeakable absorption of emotions that hits that passage from adolescence to adulthood. It all comes down to Chopra's slide direction, that first half featuring this nurtured, idyllic, music-filled, almost soft and nostalgic, this general overlook of 80s life, and then segueing into a second half that is more to the core, caged, wider in hues like the life is sucked out of it, uh, dialogue-driven where all of the actions rest on the voices and the silences. It's almost thriller-esque in tone because of it. It's also because of Laura Dern who's just, she's a goddamn treasure. I think it helps that she was pretty much the same age as her character when she was filming it. So you can almost see she doesn't even quite understand or fully comprehend those emotions. In her first leading role, she accepts and leans into those emotions so well. And it's just very clear, even from the get-go, that she would be, frankly, one of our best actresses. And just as the short story by Joyce Carol Oates, which this film is based on, which itself is very thinly threaded, I would say that because the film is adapted in that way, more focused on the characters and the weighted layers that lie beneath, uh, I would say that this is actually a pretty great example of how to do interpretation and film adaptations right. I do think maybe a little bit more cohesiveness of its propulsion to the conclusion of its plot might have helped drive these themes home a little bit more for me 
instead of feeling overarching or sort of coming out of nowhere. Like, I do wish Arnold Friend was peppered in a bit more in the first half. If he is ultimately the antagonist, I would think that sense of looming dread or those small incepted ideas for the character to not be sure of what's going to happen later on uh, could have had a stronger impact. But it also doesn't take away any of the impact it does make, and I fully see what the film was trying to do, and I commend Joyce Chopra for that entirely. Laura Dern knocks it out right out the gate, and it's really a great little indie film that I can't wait for you guys to check out. So for that, I'm giving the film Smooth Talk four out of five stars. I do have this on Blu-ray from the Criterion Collection, so a lot of the special features are just housed on this disc and nowhere else. However, there is a 2020 interview with Chopra, Oates, and Dern that is right here on YouTube that I would highly advise for you guys to check out. I think I'm gonna just have a, a button there in the corner for you to check it out, but I would see that after you've seen the film. So that's it, that's my take on 1985 Smooth Talk. Was my review smooth enough for you guys? I would love to know if you've seen the film or not, and of course to hear your thoughts on the film as well, because. I would love to discuss. So be sure to leave all of that in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this review, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more of this kind of content, be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that way you're notified as soon as new content drops. Thanks again. And until next time, I'm David Fish for Fish to Go.